Have you been involved in any other um, non-musical pursuits? Like uh, there was talk about some philosophical um, developments. Like uh, I don't know if you'd call it a sect or a cult. Well, I would call it that. Yeah. What yeah. was what was the overriding philosophy? Well, sleep late was the main thing. What would happen is you'd go to bed late and sleep late. And that's what the, you know, the guru said to do, and I did, you know. And so you just do what he said, you know. And I did that for about three, four months, actually. Hadn't you already been doing that, more or less, when you were with the group? Yeah, yes. But I didn't realize it, you see, mm -hmm. until late, late mm. after the fact, actually. Yeah. Martial amplifiers have defined the sound of rock for nearly 30 years now. It's only fitting that the Hollywood launch of their new JCM 900 series, the world's loudest amplifier, that Jim Marshall's special guest should be the world's loudest guitarist, Nigel Tufnell from Spinal yeah. Tap. Now, are you currently affiliated with any labels? Or are you guys shopping? Or what's I go right? shopping, yeah. No, I mean for a record label? Oh. Well, we did Christmas with the Devil, um, which was on Demon Records, and the, the, the old record was just re-released in London about s ten months ago. But I can't really... I was talking to Wyndham Hill for a while, but they seemed to say something about not being right for the, the label, and I didn't you really know, know quite what they meant. They're mostly acoustic music. Oh, is that why? And yeah. And, of course, volume has always been one of your fortes. Yeah. Well, you see, m that's probably why they sort of nixed it. See, my idea was to do very loud acoustic music. That, that what was happening with all the guitar stuff, with the, what they call the new, w new age, right? Mm -hmm, right. But to make it loud and exciting rather than quiet, you know. How would you make acoustic guitars any louder? Play on electric. So. Oh. Hello. Yeah. Nigel, Nigel. Hello. 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 Yes, right, yeah. Hello. You're in LA here. Yes. And this Well, is we're doing the, this Marshall presentation of this great new amplifier, you know, goes to 20 and has all the everything you'd need, and they're going to explain it to me tonight. Yeah. See this, when the light is on? Right. The light's on. When the light is on, the amp is on. Yeah, right. When the light is off? Light's off. The amp amp's is off. off. Oh, amp I see. Yeah. Yeah. But the new amp, in any case, it goes to 20, is really uh, one of the greatest pieces uh, since, well, I don't know what. Since the one that went to 11. Right, exactly. Now it's 20. Now it's 20, exactly. All the volume you can need, mm -hmm. and maybe more, you know. There's another light. Yeah. There, well, let's use it from here. Is there... so, so the light if is If these on. two lights are on, it's on. It's on. And distorted. And if they're both off, right. it's off. Right. But the trick is to match to the one without the light. Yes. You have, you have to match it to match the one it. with the light right. to make it work. Yeah. Do you envision any music that you will be creating in the near future necessitating even more volume, louder than 20? Yes, I do. Um, perhaps as, as loud as 30, actually. And I'll describe to you why. The music I'm now doing on my own, solo, is purely decibel related. No more 
chord pattern, so to speak, all just bursts of noise, mm -hmm. which for me makes it necessary to have 20 or more, you see. Mm. So I would experiment at home with my amplifier and not get the results I needed. So it was time to go to professionals, being the Marshall Company. Mm -hmm. And they were nice enough to, you know, put their scientists to work on it. You know, a lot of people that worked on the bomb actually work for Marshall. Mm. Same sort of engineering, mm -hmm. you know. Experts on loud things. Loud, exactly. Bomb, mm. rock and roll. And, but there's no mushroom cloud with rock and roll. That's mm. a great thing, mm -hmm. you know. No, you know, skin things happening years later, I hope. All right, let's say all these were turned all the way up. Would it be too, too yeah. much? No, not at all. All the way up. Yeah. OK. This is the clean channel. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I don't want to hear the clean. Do you want to hear the other one all the way up? Yeah, yeah the money, yeah. yeah. Well, let's just play one note and see what it sounds like. Now that I'm working with the Marshall Company, and they've done this great new amp, which of course goes up to 20, um, I've come up with another idea for them, which I hope they can use, which is a capo for an amplifier. Hmm. How would that work? Okay. First of all, it would have to be quite large. Instead of this big to wrap around the neck, it would be this big. Mm -hmm. Big piece of rubber. Mm -hmm big piece of what they call it elastic holes about this big mm -hmm. then let's say you're excuse me doing a blues shuffle in A mm -hmm. let's say the singer feels real good he says let's do it in B time for the capo for the amp for the amp yeah wrap it round go up a step but you'd stay in the same position on the guitar? Yes, because my theory is, it's not fully explored, is that the compression created by the pressure on the speaker cones would make squeeze it up and up and up, you see. Mm -hmm. So we're talking maybe about some sort of patent or something like that. One chap said it might be ahead of its time, he mm. said. And I said, well, what about next week? Hello. Steve Lukather from Tony. Nice, nice to meet you. Great to meet you. Great to meet you. You're really uh, a huge, huge fan. Thank you. Well, I uh, listen to your music a lot, and uh, it's uh, nice, good, good player, great player, thank you. legendary. Not, not as good as you, though. Well, you know, I've been studying your music. And, you know, Have you? Great. Well, I've been studying my own music as well. There. Lick My Love Pump is one of my all-time favorites. Yes, that's a nice tune. I'm, I'm doing it in another key next year. Oh, really? Yes. Uh, originally in D minor, I'm doing it in E minor. Oh, I've learned some new. It's a little happier. Hey, Dweez, how you doing? Good to see you. Look, look, we've got stars of all types and shapes. Hello. Yes. Did you pal around with any of the, the guitar gods, the Claptons and Becks and Pages? And well, not really, Dave no. Dave Davies, maybe? No. No, of course I was familiar, but no, no palling around, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Palling around would, would indicate actual meeting of these people, yes? Mm. Then yeah. no would be the answer. C.C. DeVille from Poison. Hello, nice to nice meet you. Show. Legendary. That's why I remember Peter Frampton <laughs> from the old days. Hello. Yes, we've known each other since we were in the... Yeah, it was actually there, wasn't it? Was it? Yeah. yeah. It's about there. Yeah, this big. Yeah. This, since we were this big, we've known each other. Now they're playing music. Mm -hmm. I thought I'd go someplace to get away from it, maybe do some, write some tunes or something. And I was with this really sweet bird, you know, her name was Munga. She was uh, Swiss? Well, she never said, she just said, I'm Munga. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really ask, because she was quite nice looking. So I said, well, Munga, why don't you come with me? So we went to this place with all these mountains, you know, they've got all these strange peaks with snow. Mm -hmm. And in the middle of the night, I was awakened and I was conscripted into the Swiss army. And of course, the problem was 
I'm really not prepared to be in any armed force unit. I don't know how to shoot a gun or s make a tent. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, and I was in it for a month mm. before Monga could make some phone calls and get me out, you see. Hmm. But I do still have, um, I have this. That's, see. that's, was, was your Swiss Army knife? Yes. See, what they do is, can you see this? Look, see what they do is, they have all these different blades, and the first thing they do is show you, for instance, look, magnifying glass. Hmm. Let's say you're in the snow, and you need to make a fire. You put this near the paper, what you're burning, and it will burn it. Or, if you cut your finger, you can look at your finger and say, it's cut. Then, the strangest thing of all is this. This, I mean, what's this? It's, it's, it's the saw. mystery blade. So is it a saw? It's not a saw, because a saw would create blood if mm. this was done. So, and it's got these little things here. And then there's this, which is mysterious to me. See, this. I never figured this out. In fact, maybe it's long distance for looking the little hole. Because it, your face is now in the hole, mm. and I can see you. Maybe that's it. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Uh, making great equipment. We've always yeah. used marshals. We'll always use them. Thank you very much. Yes. Thank you for making them. Thank you for, uh... Yeah, buddy, I want to be in a picture with this guy. Are you kidding? Shit, man. If I showed this to Gilmore, he would die. I mean, you were our hero, man. I... I need to do a like Gilmore came time. and grabbed me. He grabbed me at a party. Really? He said, man, you gotta take a picture with this guy, because this guy looked just like you. And we made him get a little sandwich. And really? So you're, he's a fan here. He's a big fan. How have you been, then? Not bad. You? Okay. Oh, it's all right, right, you know. Yeah. Oh. Thank you. Right there. So, um... Now, which area from, of England was it? Squatney? Well, Squatney, yeah. It's part of London, yeah, the East End. Oh, okay. And yeah. you and uh, David St. Hubbins... David St. Hubbins. ...lived on the same block? Same block. Just a few houses up from each other. From the age of, what, four, five, six? And you're the same age? You... Yes. Exactly the same age, but not the same month mm -hmm. or year. But the same exact age, yes. Mm. <laughs> I'm sending this to Beck, you know that. Huh? Absolutely, you must. <laughs> well, I have I get copies of these. these are, no one will believe me. David St. Hubbins won't believe me. Did any other big bands come out of Squatney, that area? Jimmy the Spot had a group that came out of there, and he was a sort of a Delta guitar player. He played some slide guitar, and Jimmy the Spot, we used to call him. Hey, Jimmy the Spot is what we'd say, mm -hmm. and he would turn and say, what, me? Hey, Jimmy the Spot, you. And he would turn and say, I'm Jimmy the Spot. The show that's coming up in London, will all the original members of Spinal Tap, with exception of the drummer, of course. Right. Yeah, Mick, of course, you know. Um, yes, it will be all original group. It will be all, all original. And uh, we're making, we're trying to go through customs with the big devil head, you know, mm -hmm. and we're having some problems with that because there's some satanistic law on the uh, travel books where you can't import a devil's head if it's more than 10 feet high. And rather than cut it down and lose the horns mm -hmm. or the chin, we're trying to get, you know, a solicitor to make it easier for us to get the mm. devil head in mm. because it's considered t starting a revolution or something if you bring in a devil head it's in look in your passport it's in the back mm. no large devil heads it says in it
you have a venue picked out? Uh, I know that Eric Clapton just did, I think, 18 nights at uh, Royal Albert Hall. At 18? Yeah, new record. Cool. We were thinking more like 18 minutes for the whole show. Um, yes, we're talking about the Hammersmith Odeon. Mm. And uh, 18 nights, every night. Different shows, different nights, but 18. Jeez, it's a lot, isn't it? That's a yeah. lot. New yeah. record. It is a record, yeah. yeah. So he had to go there every single night for 18 I believe so. Nights, yeah. Wow, I didn't know that. Did you ever own a kitten? Mm -hmm. And you know when they lick you, their little tongues be like sandpaper. It's like that. It's like, why? Would there be sandpaper in a little kitten? You don't go to the hardware store and say, I'm not a kitten because I'm working on my sink to rub it. You say, I need sandpaper, not a kitten, for that job, you see. Yeah. More's always better, innit? I'm like a vampire. They need blood, and I need volume, don't I? Nigel, what kind of amplifiers are you using these days? Well, I'm using Marshalls, of course. Uh, the two new ones, JCM 900, is a high gain master volume. And uh, right below it, JCM 900, high gain dual reverb. They're great. What's so special about them? Well, they go to 20, don't they? When you're ready for 20, you're ready for Marshall. The sound of rock. It's great because I can blow down my own house, you see. 